50 Degrees of Shade, written by Deborah Gulls as Brittany Charmantine, narrated by Rodney V. Smith. Chapter 2, Just the Tip. I'm in San Francisco on a crowded commute time sidewalk across from the address Clarissa gave me, my neck craned upward. It turns out her favorite building in San Francisco looks like a penis, or to be more specific, an uncircumcised penis. I like irony as much as the next person, but come on! This is so conspicuous that maybe it would be better for everyone involved if I returned to Berkeley and celebrated the end of finals getting shit-faced at a dive bar like a normal person. And by everyone, I mean me. Plus, what does this say about Mr. Shades? Nothing good. The crescent moon hangs over the glowy tip of the penis skyscraper like a fish hook. I cannot do it. I can't. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I am not dressed appropriately for an interview with a billionaire. I'm dressed for a final. I had no time to stop back at the apartment to change. So here I am in a tight red sheath dress with one long tantalizing zipper up the back and matching red patent leather stilettos. Time to end this madness and make my departure. I turn on my heel, wobbling a little so the people around me know I'm only human. Already I can taste a too sweet $5 Cosmo from my favorite bar on my tongue. My phone buzzes. I hope this isn't Vogue texting to beg for another photo shoot. Wrestling the phone out of my tiny purse, I glance at the message. It's Clarissa. Don't even think about it. Think about what? Leaving. See, she's totally a witch. Why would you think I'm leaving? Because I know you. Just go in. The building looks like a penis. So? So I'm not in the mood to be swallowed whole by a blatant metaphor. You're just afraid of heights. Now what kind of friend rudely hurls someone's fear in their face like that? A desperate and very sick friend. Cough, cough. Fine. I jab the phone back into the purse, take one more glance up at the looming penis, and cross the street. This is when things get worse. Because the stone sign in front of the monstrosity reads, Shade's House. Crispin doesn't just live in the penis. He is the penis. Girding my loins and tugging at the bottom of my too short dress, I stride into the bright lobby, my heels click-clacking against the marble floor. The space is at least five stories high, with massive glass jellyfish sculptures, tentacles dangling from the ceiling like a sea of penises. The walls, decor, windows, even the furniture are jumbo-sized, made from hard, polished materials like glass, stone, and metal. Okay, I get it already. Penis building. It's hard, it's big, and it's fucking obvious. I hope Clarissa makes better architectural choices than this. We're going to have to have a talk before she's unleashed upon the world of building design. It's supposed to make me feel small and inadequate, but I refuse. This is when a brilliant idea inserts itself into my brain. Maybe I can get Shades to interview me in the lobby. This ample space. And wouldn't it be more appropriate than me, a young, fresh-faced college student, going up alone into his den of iniquity? To my delight, I spy a curved sandstone desk the size of a billionaire's ego. I hasten toward it, but end up sliding on the slick floor, not on purpose this time, the final eight feet. Fortunately, I manage to stay erect and arrive at the cold, gritty edge of the desk with at least 20% of my dignity intact which is more than I can say for the tip of Shade's house. Seated behind the desk is a burly security guard with a strawberry blonde man bun. He gives me the once-over, then licks his lips as if I might be a tasty snack. Can I help you? He growls in a way that seems more, can I toss you out of here in your ass? Then, can I help you relocate your interview location? I straighten my spine and clear my throat. I'm here to meet with Mr. Crispin Shades, I say crisply. Do you have an appointment, Miss? Jones. Anesthesia Jones. He examines his computer screen, then pronounces, You're not on the list. The appointment is in my roommate's name, Clarissa Mason. One moment. He types something into the computer, and a second later, he looks up and motions toward the elevator. Penthouse. About that, I was thinking Mr. Shades might prefer to do the interview in the lobby, for propriety's sake. Propriety? Mr. Shades? <laughs> Aren't you the naive little more so? The gentleman laughs so hard he begins to chuckle. He turns red, and I'm contemplating whether I might have to perform CPR when a stunning blonde in a version of my exact dress, except the right side is white and the left black, approaches me. Maybe she had finals today too. 
I wondered briefly if the dress might be available in my size. Uh, Miss Jones? Oh, yes, I say when I realize she's addressing me, and I should stop picturing myself in a black and white dress. I'm here to escort you to Mrs. Shade's penthouse. If you'll follow me. My tour guide is all business and doesn't seem to notice a choking guard. I assume this means she wouldn't give a damn about my fear of heights, so I take in a long, calming breath and follow her to the elevators, leaving Mr. Manbun to die in a severe case of toxic masculinity. I won't go into too much detail about the trip on the elevator to the 54th story penthouse, other than to say that it's lucky I haven't eaten all day. I don't think Mr. Shades would have appreciated vomit on his pristine elevator rocket. But that's not even the worst part. Guess where I'm sitting? In his living room, on a sofa, beside a glossy black grand piano, facing the windows which overlook the city and bay. Did I mention the windows are about a thousand feet tall? And really clean. So clean they do little to alleviate the rising panic in my stomach. I am literally paralyzed by the view. Miss Black and White Dress left me alone with a glass of sparkling water and a promise that the interview would commence shortly. I try to concentrate on the light show on the Bay Bridge, which is vaguely pretty and twinkly, but not helping. I'm a total mess. But I need to get it together for Clarissa, so I squeeze my eyes shut and try to think about all the things that make me likable, empathetic, and respectable, like my affinity for British novels, love of dusty libraries and puppies, perfect academic record, and disdain for Earl Grey tea, not to mention my ordinary appearance. Okay, I guess I mentioned it. Miss Jones, a deep voice rumbles next to my ear. I scream, tumble off the sofa, and end up on my hands and knees, my lips inches from Mr. Shade's enormous bare feet. End of chapter two. You can read 50 Degrees of Shade on Wattpad.com. Follow Deborah Gulls on social media. Links are in the description. Music track was Blythe by the artist known as Twinkles. Links are also in the description. Chapters are released every Wednesday and Saturday. Be sure to subscribe to be alerted for the next one. Mm -hmm.